Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I'm getting real about how lesbians have sex. It's a question that has come up on this channel before and I just so happen to be a lesbian. So I am here to fill you in on the deets, whether you are just someone who's genuinely curious about how queer sex works, or maybe you are someone who has a vagina and you are considering having sex with someone else who has a vagina for the first time. Either way, you're gonna find this video to be very helpful and illuminating. So if that sounds good to you, then make sure you keep on watching. Guys, gals, non-binary people, you're getting yourself in the mood. Don't want to be really curling them like this. Let me start that again. <laughs> Can I get anything right? I have some exciting news before I jump into today's video, and that is that I have officially relaunched my Patreon. You can now go and join my Patreon. There is some amazing new features on there. And when you join my Patreon, you will get access to my exclusive sex positive community. So if you've always wanted to be able to open up more of a personal dialogue with me, because I unfortunately just don't have the time to answer everyone's sex questions, then join my Patreon because you will be guaranteed exclusive access to do that with me. Unfortunately, sex education doesn't really tend to cover queer sex at all. We don't learn about how people who do not fall under the definition of heterosexuality actually can give and receive pleasure. I mean, sex education in general really doesn't cover pleasure nearly enough, which is why this channel exists, because sex should be something that's fun and pleasurable. It can obviously be had for the purpose of procreation, but there are other reasons that we can have sex as well. That was why I made this channel, to talk about the fact that sex can be pleasurable and how you can unlock that pleasure. Now, when we do learn about sex, in school, we learn about a super heteronormative version of it. We learn that sex is something that happens when a penis goes into a vagina. While this is one way to have sex, it is only one way. It is incredibly delegitimizing to people who don't have penetrative sex. And people who don't have penetrative sex aren't necessarily just queer people. There are also people who are in heterosexual relationships. The idea that in order to have sex, you need to have a penis penetrating a vagina puts a huge amount of pressure on people with penises to constantly have and maintain rock hard penises at all times when they're having sex so that they can penetrate their partners. We know that one of the number one ways in order to not be able to perform sexually is to feel under any kind of pressure or stress because there's a strong connection between our brains and our genitals. So we need to really move away from this super heteronormative version of sex and this super performative idea of sex as well. Sex is about giving and receiving pleasure. That is really all it is. Maybe this is gonna be a little bit of a letdown for people, but there is no key way for lesbians to have sex in the same way that there is no key way for straight people to have sex. Some straight couples actually enjoy having sex where there's no penetration, or perhaps the person with the vagina is wearing a strap on and penetrating their male partner anally. That is also a perfectly valid way to have sex. Now, all of that said, I do want to share with you some of the more common ways that some lesbian couples can have sex. And I'm going to start with scissoring. Moments condoms are made for anyone who wants to have a good time, but their true passion is empowering women and femme people to celebrate and protect their sexual health and take the stigma away from purchasing condoms. Moments condoms are designed for pleasure and durability. Made from premium quality latex, each and every condom is quality tested to ensure you always feel protected. Emblazoned with fun slogans to take the intimidation factor out of carrying condoms, Moments want everyone to feel confident about prioritizing their sexual health because having safe sex shouldn't be taboo or gender specific. Grab a purse-sized tin 
or try a pack of their new Ultra Thin range, which comes with extra lubrication and is available in regular, large and extra large. You can find them at over 600 Coles supermarkets Australia-wide or hit the link below this video and use code NADIA50 for 50% off when you spend $20 or more. So there is actually quite a lot of debate among lesbians as to whether or not scissoring is a real and legitimate thing. And this is because in its simplest form, the definition of scissoring is two people with vaginas forming their bodies into the shape of scissors and essentially banging against each other. So essentially spreading your legs and getting your vulva and bumping it against the other person's vulva. Now for most people with vulvas, that's not gonna be very comfortable and it's not going to bring any real pleasure. What a lot of lesbian couples tend to enjoy is a slightly more sophisticated version of this and a slightly more pleasurable version as well called tribbing. And tribbing is where one person straddles over the other person and they'll usually do it over their thigh and then essentially grinds their vulva against their partner. In doing that, they're going to be able to stimulate their clitoris and the clitoris, if you've been watching this channel, you should know by now, that is essentially the pleasure center for people who have vulvas. It has thousands of nerve endings, which means that it can bring us intense pleasure and it can also help to get us over the line to reach the big O. Now, the great thing about tribbing is the person who is straddled over their partner has essentially full control. They can decide how hard or how gently to grind, how vigorously, how fast or slow, and they can really angle their body in the exact way that is going to best target their clitoris. For those reasons, it can actually be incredibly pleasurable and it can also bring both partners close together. So it can be a really intimate, really passionate and sensual experience. I will give a word of warning that tripping should absolutely never be practiced without a lot of lubrication. So I don't recommend doing tribbing just to get started. If you have just undressed, I wouldn't recommend going straight to straddling over your partner's thigh and tribbing simply because when you don't have a ton of lubrication and you are grinding your clitoris against something, it's going to essentially create a lot of dry friction and dry friction can lead to micro tearing, which is tiny tears that are super microscopic. They're not visible to the human eye, but it's going to essentially result in some stinging and burning sensations that aren't going to be very pleasant for the vulva owner. So either just add some personal lubricant to your clitoris and your vulva area, or just wait until you are a bit more naturally lubricated a little bit further into the action, so to speak, before you go ahead and straddle over your partner. Now, while you can absolutely have sex without penetration, it is not uncommon at all for lesbians, people with vaginas, when they are having sex with other people with vaginas to penetrate one another with fingers or a toy. And the essential objective of that is to target the G spot because we know the G spot is roughly an inch and a half inside the vagina. For most people with vaginas, it's along the front wall of the vagina and it actually is part of the clitoris. So we once used to think that the clitoris was just that little bump that we could see on the outside externally, but we now know from more current research that actually it has roots that run deep into the vagina, like a wishbone shape, and they actually butt up against the G-spot. So when you are pressing against the G-spot, you are also pressing against essentially the end of those roots of the clitoris, which is why it can be incredibly pleasurable. And for a lot of vagina owners, just that stimulus simulation alone can bring them to climax. So the sort of best way to go about doing that is with a motion you've probably heard of before, which is the come hither. It's as though you are beckoning for someone to come toward you and you are curling your fingers. And the curling of the fingers allows you to target the G-spot and palpitate against it. But it should only ever be done quite gently to start and only move up to being more vigorous if a partner asks you to because palpitating the G-spot too vigorously or too hard can cause discomfort and pain. But this is a very common way for people with vaginas to have sex with other people with vaginas, to penetrate the vagina with a couple of fingers, and that can be done in all of the same positions 
that a heterosexual couple would have sex in. Doggy style, you can have one partner get down on all fours and you can have the other person get behind them on their knees and get their fingers and penetrate them from behind and thrust back and forth in the same way that a penis owner would thrust into a vagina. It's actually really not that different. You can basically think of the fingers as doing all of the things a penis can do and potentially more because the fingers have obviously a lot more dexterity and control and there's a bit more precision there to be able to really get in and pinpoint the G-spot you can actually really feel around for it and target it. Another great position to penetrate someone with fingers is also missionary position to have one partner laying down, the other person on top of them and putting their fingers underneath in between their legs. And again, you can just gently gyrate or thrust back and forth and put your fingers in and out of the other person. There's also like a spooning position. You can have one person laying on their side. You can have the other person with vagina behind them and they can go underneath and around and put their fingers in. Basically any angle from which you can get your fingers into a vagina is a possible lesbian sex position. In reality, sex positions aren't heterosexual or lesbian or queer or gay. Sex positions are just positions. This is probably the act that most people tend to think of when they think of lesbian sex because we see it a lot in porn and it also kind of goes back to a more heteronormative idea of sex, which is this idea of sex requiring a penis or something penis-like or phallic and lots of penetration. Now, in reality, not all lesbians have sex with a strap-on, though there are plenty who do. I personally haven't had a lot of experiences with strap-ons. I've had a few, they've been very enjoyable, but I also find fingers just as enjoyable, if not more enjoyable than a strap-on. So this idea that we need to have something phallic or penis-like in order for sex to be enjoyable is just simply not true. While it can be a really pleasurable thing, it's not compulsory for most people who identify as lesbians. Now, strap-ons can be a lot of fun because they essentially, what a strap-on is, is a wearable dildo. So you've got a harness that you will strap on to your body. And then that harness has a essentially a slot in it that a dildo can go into. And most strap-ons are designed that they can take all different sizes, lengths, and girths of dildos. So it can be really fun because you can mix it up. You can change it so you can use smaller, thinner dildos to start to get used to it, especially if you're not used to being penetrated. Then you can move up to larger dildos. You can also get vibrating dildos that work in the same way as using a vibrator, like a rabbit vibrator, some of them have extra attachments on them to target the clitoris as well. And for that reason, it's quite silly that we compare lesbians wearing strap-ons to penises because it's completely different. People often say things like, well, if lesbians are wearing strap-ons, why don't they just have sex with the real thing? This suggests that lesbians are trying to recreate a penis when they're wearing a strap-on. And this simply isn't true at all. They're essentially just trying to give their partner that feeling of fullness that you get when you are penetrated with a dildo and they're trying to target their partner's g-spot but that can be done in ways that simply can't be achieved with a penis because you can obviously have vibrating dildos and you can have colorful dildos in all different shapes and sizes that don't really resemble penises at all but like i said this is not the way that every lesbian has sex it's generally less common, especially during casual hookups and first time hookups because it requires actually bringing something along. So most of the time, if you're having more of a casual or spontaneous hookup with someone you've just met at a bar, you're not necessarily gonna have a strap on or even if you're bringing them home, you might not feel sort of ready to have a conversation about a strap on yet. So often it will come out a little bit sort of further down the track, but some people definitely will just use a strap Strap on for a one night stand. There is no right or wrong way to do it. Now, those are just some of the more common practices of how lesbians have sex. There are myriad ways. There are so many ways that I couldn't possibly detail them all in this video. What I hope that you have taken away is that 
There is no key core default way to have sex regardless of your gender or your sexual identity and regardless of the gender or the sexual identity of the people that you are having sex with. Sex is an exchange of pleasure. For some people that means a penis, for other people it means a vagina, for some people it means penetration and for other people it means no penetration at all. So whatever way feels good for you and your partner to have sex is the right way. It doesn't make you any more or less of a lesbian and it doesn't make you any more or less of a straight person. And that's the main thing that I hope you take away today. If you want to see more content on lesbian sex or just queer sex in general, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always, guys, be respectful and I'll see you in the next video.